about money I wouldn't worry about nothing at all If I didn't worry about money I wouldn't worry about nothing at all If I didn't have this guitar I'd never leave the house at all If I didn't have this guitar Never leave the house at all. Like a little town like this, no, no basketball. What? They just, well, there ain't nothing. That's all there is to it. There ain't no talking about anything. There just ain't nothing. I got a blue top right on mid and Portugal. I got a blue top right on mid and Got a blue tap right around an old high five, a little bit of money and a whole lot of time, and I don't worry about money. Yeah, and our town only has one side. One side has cows and one side has people. Basketball's life, the communities live and die through these kids. We got a window to hang the moon in when it's full. We got a window to hang the moon in when it's full. We got a window to hang the moon inside. A whole lot of books and cheap red wine and baby, let's don't worry about money. 'Cause if I didn't worry about money, I wouldn't worry about nothing at all. I didn't worry about money. I always say that basketball is a good game and a wonderful thing for a community because it's a warm place where everybody could go and it wasn't a church or a bar. seven girls in our high school. And all of them play basketball. If there wasn't any basketball in Greenpoint, I'd probably be fat. Because <laughs> I don't even know what we would do. It's not really ever crossed my mind, I guess. And, you know, if we didn't, probably wouldn't live here if we didn't have basketball. and Jordan Bersima, a long wait is almost over. Class C basketball season will begin in just one week. Last season, Ellie led the Reed Point Pirates to the state championship game. But Reed Point was upset by its district rival, the Harleton Engineers, a team they had beaten four times that year. Our town had never won it, and you know, everybody was just like, oh, this is your year, this is your year, you're gonna win it this year, and we didn't do it, so it was just, it was a really hard thing to swallow, but it's motivated us for this year. After losing the state championship, the Lady Pirates played more than 50 games in the offseason. During the summer, they traveled thousands of miles and camped out in tents, working to improve their game by challenging bigger schools and even college teams. We you know, played six games every weekend, and it's really hard getting a job that will let, allow you to do that. So um, I worked with my dad, and I did the, ran the backhoe and the big roller thing that, you know, I was like, you see in the construction sites. I'm kind of, um, delicate. <laughs> so working with my dad just wasn't my cup of tea, so I decided not to do that. <laughs> you ask some blonde some questions, you're gonna get some blonde answers in there, I'll tell you. I don't have any kids, but 
Ellie Bursamai was married to her aunt for seven years, and her father, Dean, was working, and her mother, Julie, was working, and she's been in the gym with me since I can remember, since she was two. I didn't really like basketball when I first started, but my parents were like, you were going to shoot hoops, you were going, you know? And I just got to the point where, hey, this is kind of fun, you know, when you finally learn how to do it. By the time she was a seventh grader, she could crack the three ball, I mean, consistently. She was a great junior high player. Jordan I was, was fat. <laughs> Jordan was a little bit bigger. Not really fat, just plump or junky, but he didn't have a triple chin like I did when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to live up to with Ellie. I mean, All-State MVP. I get called the black sheep <laughs> some of the times because Ellie's, you know, so conservative and reserved and everything. I'm kind of wild and off the wall and a little crazy sometimes. Coach Bill Triplett grew up in North Dakota, where his father coached high school basketball. When he applied for a teaching job in Reed Point 19 years ago, the Pirates had managed only one win in the previous three seasons. I, I had an interview, and uh, the school board, after I, they asked me about 40 questions, and 37 of them were on basketball. It wasn't anything about business teacher or anything. How do you break a 2-2 on press? What's your philosophy against man-to-man -man pressure and this and that? I loved it out here. They say we're not allowed to have boyfriends during the season in Reed Point. And when we were finally allowed to date, man, I was going to date some boys. <laughs> we were going to take advantage of it. You better believe it. <laughs> we had to go to different towns, though, because boy picking is not so good here. <laughs> Thanks. As you can see, it's got all these naked guys on the wall and all our ex-boyfriends, 38 of them on this. <laughs> on this one. Uh, no. no, it's David. I don't want to talk here. to him. Oh, here. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk to him. Just take me a second. No, here. just think. I don't, I don't want to talk to him. I know. I'll just tell him. How do I go go? Green. Green button. I don't know which one's green. That one. That one. That one. Hello? All? Oh, not too bad. How are you, David? <laughs> here she is. Not David Foster. David Unlock. Visca. <laughs> <laughs> More than half of Montana's high schools have fewer than 130 students. These schools compete in their own athletic league, which is known as Class C. But the smallest Class C schools, like Reed Point, often don't have enough players to fill a roster and must form a team with students from a neighboring community. This year, Reed Point will play with Rappelejay, a town more than 40 miles away. Here in Rappel J, we have 30 or less high schoolers total. So we have a lot of independent classes. I'm in my own study hall. I have no teacher. I just do my homework and go on. Okay, now what do you have to hang out? Let's just call I drive about two and a half hours every day to Repoint and to school for practice and games. I do that every day. Our driver is my dad, Sterling. <laughs> Yeah, we make him listen to our music. <laughs> Their favorite is, I don't even know what you call it, popular, popular whatever, I don't know. <laughs> right here they, they can feel me pulling off and then this cattle guard rumbles and they, they wake up then. And they all say, keep driving, <laughs> still tired. Getting back to that state championship game is like our motivation for everything. Everything that we do, all the driving and miles and hours in the gym and everything like that is just for that state championship game. In 1897, only a few years after its invention, the game of basketball arrived in Montana. Before men even started playing the game, young women formed the first teams in the state and competed in organized leagues. People were astounded. These were girls in bloomers and middies playing this new game that was still two words, basketball. It immediately fascinated the spectators as well as engaged the young women playing the game. They loved it. They loved being able to put on the bloomers, shed their bustles, and go out there and mix it up. Boys basketball had been no interest whatsoever 
in the early years. They couldn't even draw enough crowd to make money on boys basketball. It was the girls they wanted to see. In the early years, girls' teams played fast-paced, full-court basketball. But on the East Coast, many felt the full-court game was unladylike, and new women's rules were created, establishing a stationary half-court game. The new rules eventually reached Montana, and the popularity of women's basketball faded. I played basketball for the Fairfield Eagles, 1944-45. My coach that we had did not like to coach girls' basketball, and so he told us we were going to have to play under the same rules that the boys did, same training rules, same practice. And if there was enough left to play, make a team, well, we all stayed. We were just as tough, and we could beat the boys. You just sort of gave them a hip, sent them flying. <laughs> 